the midfield though is throwing up a few conundrums now, as I say, with Lundstrom's contract running out, Ryan Jack's contract running out. There's there's this legacy from the previous manager and the previous regime that they've let a lot of contracts just go down to nothing. And we're and Philip Clement really can't do much about that, can he? I mean, it's just the, the previous structure of it all, to be honest. Um, you're saying there about Ryan Jack's contract running down. Um, as far as I'm concerned at the moment, he's, he's, no, he's no a Rangers player. He, he's, he's probably the, the most well-paid spectator that we've got in the club. I, I feel like... He, I, I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain because the way that it was run before, letting like, Alfredo's contract go right to the wire, Kent's, etc., we can't afford to do that with some of these players this time, like like the Cantwell, Sterling. Um, I'm not going to say Butland at the moment because there's interest in him already, and I'm quite scared who we would get. Maybe that Keller's for down the road. <laughs> um, I, th- I had to get the mention in there, eh? but I, I think that that personally, the way that we were doing our contract business, like it needs to stay out of the media. I know there's always going to be some sort of leaks. But this back and forth with Lundstrom apparently that's going on, keep it behind closed doors. Okay, we, we don't need to know that if you will he will he not sign a contract, will he will he not. Look what happened with Goldson a, a while ago as well. I think that the way we've let team, I, I suppose main team players, their contracts go down, I think as some clubs have kind of just thought, oh, we'll, we'll wait till it goes down and we'll get him for nothing. And then all of a sudden, Goldson signs a four-year extension when he's basically already out the door. I mean, I can see that happening with Barris, actually, that things were ran before, that he's so close to going away and he gets a year, another year or something like that. I mean, Scott Wright was driven to the airport about four times in the last regime and, and he still stayed. I think we need to get the main players down on a new contract that, that have got a resale value. See signing players again that don't have a, re- a resale value. Like Lundstrom, yeah, he's a good player for us. He's playing probably one of the, the best seasons he's had under Clement. But realistically, is he going to give us a resale value that can help us build the squad? So if he gets the contract, not too bothered. If he doesn't, and we maybe get some money for him, I, I, I don't know. I just think that the players that we, we have now that we, we feel like building this team on... Like, for example, I wouldn't waste any money, like I said, given, like, write a contract or something. But then Matondo, Matondo's got that resale value because he's pace. He's a Welsh international. If we let his contract go right down to the wire in the future, then we've got problems. But I think that the way that it's been run now, I think we're starting to get the the, te- the, the team that we want down in proper contracts and, and not let it run down to the wire, like the mistake with Alfredo and, and Kent. Yeah, very much so. A uh, quick answer to Rangers 55. No, Robert has not left the pod. He is busy with work commitments or family commitments, just like everybody else. But it just seems to have dragged on a little bit for Robert. But he will be back. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. Uh, Lewis, obviously, will come back to the playing staff. Um, one guy getting a bit of criticism in the chat and lately has been Connor Goldson. Um, a lot of folk believe that his time is up at Rangers. He's been there for a, a, a long time. Um, it's, it's certainly a position that I've harped on for a long time that, uh, you know, the centre-half position is one that should be as solid as, as possible. The two should play as much as they can together and get that understanding. But Connor seems to have caught the wrath of the, the boo boys in the last few months, probably a good while now. Um, what do you... What do you think his future lies? You know, the Connor Goldson is a he's a he's a very difficult you know case subject here because I think you know it's fifty fifty. There's nobody really in between. You know, like um, Kieran and Kerbal were on a bit lunch from there. They could take him or leave him. I don't think that's the case with with Connor Goldson. I think people either love Connor Goldson or they hate him. And I used to love Conor Goldson, but this season it's starting to become final nail in the coffin material for me because, you know, he's 31. He's going to be coming 32 very, very soon. He's the highest paid player at the club and his performances just are not warranting that, that, that wage. 
But at the same time, he's never been put in a position where he needs to fight for a place at this football club. And, you know, just given the fact that his contract's so lengthy, given his age, like I said, and given his wages, he is going to be almost impossible to sell for any sort of decent value. So to me, Conor Goldson, as, as poor as he's been this season, I think I would rather keep him and, you know, just say to him, listen, big man, your third choice come next season, we're going to bring in a centre-back on the left side next to John Suter. Because John Suter has still yet to really have a, a consistent run on his favoured side, and he deserves that because I think he's had the best overall performances in a centre-back at Rangers. And you say to Goldson, you need to fight now. You need to show us what you showed us in 55. You are not strolling onto the park and putting in a 7 out of 10 every three games and then having a run of games where you put a 1 out of 10. That, that's, no, that's not happening here at Rangers anymore. That's what I would like to see because I don't think it's possible. You know, everybody in the comments, it, it, it's so easy apparently to, to just go, right, he needs sold, he needs sold, right, we'll get so-and-so for him, we'll get that for him. That's not how it works. You need to think about the reality of what you can get for certain players and the value of keeping certain players. And whilst Conor Golson probably should not be starting for Rangers anymore, he's worth keeping just based on the fact of the difficulty that it would be to sell him. And I think it would be easier to sell the likes of Ben Davies, for example. He's a bit younger. He's a left footer, so it's a bit of a, 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 commod a commodity. And, you know, he's English. Get him out the door and bring in a young left-footed centre-back to push Conor Goldson. And it's the same with Lundstrom. You know, and I, I get what Kieran said. You need to look at um, resale value, but you kind of do that with every single player. I, I know as football manager fans, that's what we love to do, but you do need a mix of a veteran player and, and young player in there, or else it won't work. You know, that famous tagline, you, you don't want anything with kids. And it is a reality most of the time. So you need to think about who over the age of 30 is worth keeping. And for me, Conor Goldson, John Lundstrom and the captain are probably the th three I would keep. Ryan Jack's gone for me, absolutely gone. We just cannot rely on him anymore. As good a footballer he is, his career for me at Rangers is finished. Yeah, certainly. I would appear so anyway. Um, although he did say in his last pre not what press conference today, but the press conference previous, he did say that they're looking at a long-term solution for Ryan Jack. So I don't know if that pointed towards a new contract. I'm not saying it is. I'm just... <laughs> I see poor Scott's blowing up in my right-hand side. <laughs> his face is getting redder. Uh, but just to caveat that, uh, Nicholas has said, we've still got the best defence in the league. So we're obviously doing something right, uh, Scott. You know, although we've got all these problems, it's, you know, although we... You know, the fans are saying we've got all these problems in defence. We've still got the best defence in the league. I think the keeper has a lot to do with that as well, Brian, because obviously he's yeah. got a better state percentage than McGregor had last season. But listen, Connor's getting to an age where I think he's lost a bit of pace, to be honest with you. He's, he's never the most physical defender, Connor, but he's a very good footballer. But you don't get a lot of centre backs these days who are very physical. They're mainly footballers and they are centre backs. I think you look at Carter Vickers, he's quite a physical centre back, but majority of centre-backs now are like to play football, don't they? I think they're better footballers and they're defenders, that's just the way the game is. But I think that Conor Golson's a strange one because I like Conor as a player, but this season he's let himself down, he's let the team down. But like Nicholas said, we have got the best defence now still, so it's a kind of... And then I heard the manager sticking up for his defence as well, saying we don't let in a lot of goals, and we don't, but the goals do let in. You say to yourself, how did they manage, how did our team manage to score that? Because it's a shit show. But I've been saying, well, we need two centre-backs in. I think big suitors flutter to the seed as well at times, but I do agree, he's not good on his proper side, but I've always seen John Suter and he's better than a three and is a four. That's just me. But listen, we're going to have to change it because the have and goals have been here for a long time and sometimes we do have to change things. But like I said earlier on, it depends on the manager's budget, it depends on the players he's got in mind. Like Coppin's seen... I think with guys that we probably not heard of, and I heard Kieran saying, like, why don't we keep things in house? So you get guys at Lundstrom out of contract, or looking for contracts. Had his, his agents playing games as well, because his agents saying he's maybe staying, maybe not staying. So he's looking for offers for other places. So he's putting tit bits in the media and putting them out there, just to see what offers John Lundstrom gets before he maybe decides to stay at the end or not. Listen, this is going to be John Lundstrom's probably last big contract before he 
maybe retire. So he's waiting for a quite a big one is like set him up and his family up for a while. So if they can get, I don't know what Rangers are going to offer him. Two years deal, make it a four year deal somewhere else. Because you think about that, and I know people say, why would they go elsewhere? But sometimes it's not about trophies, it's not about this, and it's not about that, it's about finance. The footballers look at that stage of their career. So it depends what he gets offered. I always thought Conor Goldson, I mean, he decided to stay because we offered him a good deal. So John and Trump will be the same, probably about the last minute to see what else he gets offered. But like I said earlier, if he goes, it doesn't bore me. If he stays, it doesn't bore me just as long as we don't beat the back. Because I'd rather bring somebody else in and pay through and nose to keep a guy at that age. I know Bush has got a good point. You kind of want to bring him the young guys. You need a couple of experienced players in the team. But if you keep goals and you keep power, you don't need to keep everybody else. As for Ryan Jack, put a Scotland shot on him. He's already been injured, but put a Rangers shot on him. He constantly has injured. So Ryan Jack's played his last game for us. Roof as well. They've done well when they've had game time, but apart from that, we spent most of the time in the stands watching, so they're better away for me. It frees up two wages to bring somebody else in or improve somebody's wages. Yeah, very, definitely. And Kieran, for you, you know, we've went round the table, so we'll come to you. Goldson, oh, do you <laughs> believe this is his last season? Um, same boat as Lewis. Keep him. Um, Tell him he's the third choice. Basically, it's his choice whether to, to sit in the stands and thin out his contract or actually want to do something. I mean, there's times our defence, going back to the comment about best defence in the league, you could honestly accompany some of our defending clips with the Benny Hill music. It, it's just comical sometimes. Like Kerr saying there, a lot of the times you're looking at it going, how have they done that? How how have they managed to score that? How have they not got it away? I mean... It seems that, that Goldson can't put the ball in anybody else's net but his own. So we, we need to, to address that, that none of our, our centre-halves can really actually score when it matters. It's a free chance after free chance. You play Rangers bingo, Conor Goldson, free header blooned over the bar is one of the first ones that you tick off. Um, I think that, I, I don't want to go on a rant about it, but I, I think that we, we do need to, to address it and get somebody else in. But again going back to what, what Lewis said about the resale value type of thing, we might not have the money to, to bring somebody else in. I think that we've got, and, and I don't know if it sounds stupid, but we have two centre-backs that play the ball at their feet. I think that causes problems in itself sometimes. You've got a suitor that can stride with the ball. Goldson sometimes does it, and you can't, as soon as Goldson puts his hand up, he's lost the ball. Goldson's got that absolute ping that, that really scared defences for a while, but He's been sussed out. He's been sussed out that he's not got that physicality as much anymore. He's not going to go for every single header, as you see when he goes up with his elbow for no apparent reason. I feel like Goldson has lost a, a lot of pace. He's lost a, a lot of physicality, but I think he's lost a bit of heart as well. I mean, as a football player, you've got to have thick skin, right? And I, I absolutely we get that with different players. Maybe they handle it differently. You didn't came what Goldson's maybe thinking mentally as well from going for this hero in 55 to being booed off the pitch sometimes. I think that every manager has kind of favoured Tav and Goldson, everyone that we've had that, that they've been there. So maybe it's to do with the leadership or maybe it's to do with what they give the, the young guys and how to, to help them adjust. But I think, like, like I said, going back on what Lewis said, Goldson next season should be, be on the bench at least either third or second choice, get somebody in with Suter, see how they do, and maybe that will give Goldson a little bit of hunger to fight, say, no, that's my position, and bring it back. These these games in old firms, I think that Goldson's beaten before he even gets on the pitch in an old firm. He's been through that many spankings. I think that um, I think that it's a mentality issue. I really do at the moment. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I would say against that is for a guy on near 40 grand a week. I can't imagine the manager will be too keen on him sitting on a bench on that sort of wage. So that would be my only issue. 